Yo, what's up, homies? Welcome back to the Kai's Cast. This is episode two, and we've got some cool subjects to talk about. Also, if my voice sounds a little bit off in this, it's because I went to a party and inhaled a lot of dust, and now my sinuses are all mad at me. <laughs> I wanted to start off by saying thank you guys so much for your support. You guys mean the world to me, and I think it's so awesome that I still have people every day asking me when the next YouTube video is going to be. I've been working on developing a better schedule and becoming better at making videos. I didn't realize how bad I was at making videos until I started trying to make videos. For a long time I just I told myself that I was good at making video For a long time I told myself that I was good at making videos and I just didn't do it very often, but then as I really forced myself to start doing it, I realized that I'm not as good as I thought I was and I've had to humble myself a lot and learn how to do things that I thought I should already know. It's definitely been a great growing experience for me, and I hope to continue to grow as I continue to make content. One of the things I recently had to do was I actually bought a course on how to use my camera. I've had a Sony a650 for I think two years now, and I've used it every once in a while, but I've never been happy with the footage I was getting out of it. I just told myself that I knew how to do it, and that it was okay, and I just, but it, truly I didn't know, and I never learned how to use it, and I was sick of just trying to figure it out by experimenting with it. So I found a great course and I've been using it and already my footage is looking light times better and I feel so much more confident using my camera. So that's something I've definitely been going through. That's kind of been like my subject of growth for the month has been dissolving my own ego about certain things and just realizing that I don't know the things that I think I know. Like there's a lot of things I tell myself that just aren't true and it's okay to be wrong about certain things especially things that you tell yourself that's the worst thing is to lie to yourself and it's been great growing experience just to realize that yeah I don't know how to do that and it's okay I can learn how to do that so if you feel like there's anything in your life that you are stuck on because you feel like you should know how to do it I advise you to at least try to give in and realize that maybe you don't know what you think you know and maybe you're not as capable as you think you are that doesn't mean you shouldn't try that just means that you should search for extra resources to help you, especially if you're struggling with something. What this means is that in the future, videos are going to get better. And I hope to always be improving my video quality, my story writing, just everything about it. I want videos to become just top quality. I want them to be the best they can be because I want people to watch them more than just once. I want it to be a video that people will come back to in a couple of years and still think, oh, this is good. Like, oh, this is... This is entertaining. So that's something I've been struggling with is trying to make videos entertaining. Because i so the most recent video, I guess I'll talk about this. I'm working on a Blank Slaps video, right? If you guys don't know, Blank Slaps is a company that they make eggshell stickers and they make them for the cheapest prices anywhere else. Um, a couple months ago, I reached out to them and said, hey, I love your guys' stickers. I would love to work on something. And they got back to me, surprisingly. And now I have an affiliate code with them, code Kai's, use it for 10% off. I make a small cut off of that, which is awesome. And I've been working on a video with them showing off their stickers, right? It is so hard to make stickers not boring, right? Because a lot of sticker videos on YouTube are boring. They're literally just somebody who has good hands writing on stickers or putting them up. And like, yeah, it's fun to watch, but I I've never sat through a whole one of those videos. I don't know if anybody else has, and if you have, I'm, I'm surprised because I just think they're they're very entertaining, but I don't, I cannot watch a full 10 minute video of somebody just writing and putting up stickers. So I filmed the whole video once before I learned how to use my camera, before I was learning how to use my camera, I should say, and it was bad, right? The, the quality of the filming was bad. The stickers I did were bad because I wasn't warmed up. It was literally, I woke up in the morning, I was like, I should film this. I woke up, filmed it, the stickers were bad I made, the the shots were bad, everything about it was bad, and I, I went through and I edited it all, and I made like almost a finished video, I would call it like one of, I probably made it like halfway through the full process of from start to finish, and I was just like, I'm going to try and watch it, and it was just a 10 minute video of just sheer boringness, right, like it was like one minute introduction, four minutes of writing on stickers, four minutes of putting stickers on things and then peeling them off of things, and then a conclusion. And it was it was really boring. Like, I didn't enjoy watching it. And I was the person who made it. Like, 
you always have extra love for the things you create. So if I didn't enjoy watching it, I don't think anybody else would have. So I decided, okay, I'm going to restart. And that was when I was like, I need to learn how to use my camera. I need to figure these things out. And I reshot, I, I reshot about half the clips before I finished, uh, finished the course on how to use my camera. So stupid me, I know I got excited. But then the other half I did film with the camera and it's still not perfect. The exp I didn't get the exposures right. That's because I needed an ND filter and I, I finally bought an ND filter, a variable ND filter. So hopefully that'll lead to some better, better exposed shots, better shots in general. We'll, we'll see in the future. <laughs> so the second half of the video is, is, is shot much better than the first half. The first half is still shot better than the, the original video. But what this means is that this video that was supposed to only take me a week, and it, it easily could have taken me a week. I mean, I believe I finished the first half in a week, and I only spent a couple hours on it every day. And I, I could have finished it in that week, but I just didn't, because I, I hated making it. I didn't enjoy making the product, and then the final product wasn't good. So as a result, it took me longer to do, because I just didn't enjoy working on it. Versus when you... Whenever I make a project and I, I'm passionate about it and I enjoy it, it becomes easier to edit. It becomes easier to, to just do everything about it. I, I much As long as I enjoy the process, I usually enjoy the end result. The whole time I didn't enjoy that process, and I think that's the reason I didn't enjoy the end result. And because it was just boring. <laughs> so this new video will be coming out next Friday. I plan to try and post videos on Fridays. I think that's the best I can do. I know when I first started... Whenever I announced that I was doing YouTube, for some stupid reason, I thought I could do it every Tuesday and Thursday. But I, I can't. I'm I'm amateur. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I used to think I did, but I really don't. And I had to realize that I don't know what I'm doing. And it's okay to work my way up to two videos a week. Because I would like to be at two videos a week eventually. But for now, I'm just going to have to be at one video a week. I plan to do a Kai's cast. Uh, I don't know if I want to do it every two weeks. I don't even know how often I want to do it. Kai's cast is one of the easier ones to do because it doesn't require as much editing <laughs> as I'm sure you've noticed. And that's one I can probably crank out and finish in a day as long as I've been filming all of my projects over the past like week. So if, whenever I do move to a two video a week schedule, Kai's cast will probably be what that second video is per week. I'm not sure yet though. I want to make YouTube my new focus. Like for a long time, just making TikTok videos and being on TikTok and trying to grow TikTok was kind of my number one. Like this is what I want to be working on. As soon as I started to realize how much potential there was there. But like last week, I'm sure you guys noticed, or I guess I don't, yeah, probably closer to last week, maybe two weeks ago. There was about two weeks where none of my videos broke 100K. Like 100K views that is. And that's bad. Like that, for my content, that's not good. So during that time, that means only a third of my followers were seeing my content, which is just bad. Like, I knew that something was up. I couldn't figure out why they, the algorithm had changed or something. I just didn't know. And all my content was just bombing. Like, I went from making an average of, like, I was getting close to, like, 15, 20 bucks a day off of just, like, exposure on my videos to getting like, there were days where I hit 25 cents. And that's when I was like, <sighs> and I'm not in it for the money, but I am, right? The money isn't why I started doing it, but it is one of the reasons I continue to do it now. I want to be able to change up my living situations. I'll talk about that more in a minute. But I need to be making consistent money. And TikTok has just shown me that it's not for making consistent money. TikTok's changing all the time, and the reason that none of my content was being pushed, I believe, is because they added the new promote feature. It's only rolled out to certain content creators, and I currently don't have the feature, which is beyond annoying, but it's literally paying for views. You pay your video, and TikTok will promote your video, and it's been crazy powerful. I saw one guy did a test where they made two accounts with uh, like average size, and they posted the same video on both accounts. One of them, they spent $10 on ads, and they got over, I believe, 150K views, while the other one didn't get any ads, or they didn't promote, only got, like I think, like 6K views, right? That's, that's massive. But what that means is that your For You page now is getting filled with people who are paying 
to get on the For You page. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Off the top of my head, I think it sounds really stupid. It feels like it really destroys organic growth on TikTok. Maybe not. I don't know. So when all this was happening, when all my content was flopping, I was like, okay, I can either be pissed at TikTok and be all upset, or I can try and find what's important in the situation. And I came to the conclusion that it was just a sign that I need to move on from TikTok. Not move on from TikTok saying I'm going to stop. I'll still be making content on TikTok. I don't think I'll ever stop doing that because TikTok's what started me on this journey. But just not focusing on it anymore. Like I don't want to be spending all my time focusing on making TikToks if TikTok's going to do little to nothing for me. Right? I very strongly feel that YouTube is a much more stable platform, which is saying something because YouTube is not stable at all. But I think it's much more stable than TikTok. And so I took this as a sign that I need to move on to YouTube. And I need to be focusing more of my energy and attentions on YouTube. And so that's what I'm working on right now. The biggest setback is the fact that I don't... I'm bad at starting to edit. It sounds interesting, but let me explain a little bit. I enjoy editing. I've been doing editing for... Um, ooh, let me think had my laptop for two okay so I think I've been editing for at least four years like editing on Premiere Pro that is so not super long but a pretty good amount of time right enough to feel comfortable with the program I can do most of the things I want to do and if I want to learn how to do something else I know how to find the information right I'm comfortable editing on Premiere Pro and I actually do enjoy it especially for personal projects I love editing on Premiere the biggest thing is that I hate starting to edit the best way I can explain this is for anybody who does workouts, you know how when you first start doing workouts, the idea of doing a workout sounds terrible. Like when you're like, oh, I have to drive to the gym and then start working out and do that for an hour. That sounds terrible, right? You hate the idea of doing it. But whenever you are working out, at least for me, as soon as I start, after like five minutes of doing my workout, I, I enjoy it. I realize that, oh, yeah, wait, I actually like doing this. And then I have fun doing it. It's the same thing with editing for me. I hate starting my edits. I hate sitting down and being like, okay, I got to spend the next three hours just editing this video. I absolutely hate that. But once I start doing that, I don't hate it anymore. And it's really easy. And I don't, I'm always like, why on earth do I complain so much to myself about this? This isn't even that bad. And I kind of enjoy doing it. It's very much, I get into a flow state and I just kind of sit through and it's like almost meditation. So I guess right I guess what I'm where I'm at right now is I'm trying to learn how to enjoy starting. That sounds so strange, but that's I think that's the best way I can put it. Is that I need to learn how to enjoy the process of starting. Starting the new project, starting new filming, all that kind of stuff. <sighs> Man. Like I said, lots of growth this month. I've been growing so much as a human. It's it's crazy. Like I mentioned earlier, I plan to change up my living situation. I've been living in St. George for a long time. Let me think, like six, six years? Yeah, I think close to six years now. I've been living here for a long time. And it's a great place. I actually really enjoy St. George. It's absolutely beautiful. If you like kind of a natural earth, formations, especially rocks, caves, arches, stuff like that. Southern Utah is absolutely beautiful for those things. The people here are very interesting. There's this, this stigma that they're all Mormons, and that's pretty true, right? It's definitely not as bad as certain areas, but specifically St. George, it just feels like a lot of old Mormon people, <laughs> and I have nothing against them. I actually very much used to be very religious and was very active in the LDS church. Nowadays, not so much. I won't get into that. Nothing they did, just personal growth. And I, they're actually great people. I actually really enjoy being around Mormon people because they have high standards and they're good people. And I enjoy being in their company. But they are very close-minded in certain ways. I think all people are. But specifically LDS people in a few different ways. And I'm just ready to move on from this kind of area. I've been here for a long time. And I'm really sick of being here. <laughs> the one thing that makes that hard is having a job, right? 
I work at Stoic Parkour Academy at the time of this recording, and I absolutely love it here. I've been working here for two years, and it is seriously probably the best job I've ever had. I absolutely love it. I love the kids I work with. I love my coworkers. I love being able to do parkour every day, teach people how to do parkour because it's something that I love, and I love being able to teach people what I love. It's absolutely amazing. But I'm ready for a break. I'm ready to move on from where I am now and grow. I feel very much stuck where I am. And growth has become harder to do where I am. Maybe that's all in my head, maybe it's not. I don't know, I'm an underdeveloped human being and I haven't explored the world enough, is how I feel. I feel like there's just so much more for me to learn about the world, and I just feel like I can't learn that from where I am right now. I need to go out and see the world. Some of you might know this, some of you probably don't, the majority probably don't, but I, I have a van. I bought a 2007 Ford Econoline, or Ecoline, I don't remember what. <laughs> uh, it's an extended it's super big. I bought it for really cheap because it was obliterated. The original owners were a bunch of, um, I don't know if they were on drugs. It just find, I find it really hard to think they weren't because that area I bought the truck from is a severe drug abuse area. And the van, I just don't even know. It seems like they went haywire on it. The inside was like mostly stripped out. They removed a lot of the inside. One of the windows was smashed out. The rear view mirror on the right side was smashed. The front windshield is got a big old crack in it. And it is just filthy. Like, it is so unbelievably filthy. So you might think, well, why did you buy this? That's so much work. And the answer is, you're right. Why did I buy this? This is so much work. Well, the reason <laughs> besides that is that it was it was cheap and it was a good vehicle has, uh, I believe, under 90,000 miles. The engine is in great condition. I got it checked up by a mechanic. It works great. It just is really scuffed up in certain things. A lot of the minor details are destroyed and scuffed, while the major important things aren't. A good example of this is that they rewired the inside. The, the original owners, they rewired the inside. They added their own lights and when they did that, they, like, hardwired him into the main system. So when we ripped it open and looked at it, it was literally held in place with hot glue. They, like, hot glued everything back together. All of the electrical system was hot glued back together. And so when I first bought it, I was kind of freaking out because every single engine light was on. Every single emblem was on. It was saying, like, I would have, I just filled it up and it say I was out of gas. I needed to check my engine. needed to check my oil. All four tiles were low. My e-brake was on, like every single thing. It said it was on. Get it checked out by a mechanic. Sure enough, just faulty wiring. Got that fixed up. She runs great. I guess I haven't decided if it's a he or she yet. But, of course, I need to assign a gender to my vehicle because that's just what you do. <laughs> but got him checked up, and the van works great. There's a few minor things I still need to get fixed, but for the most part, it's all fixed. I recently got the rear AC unit removed because it was all rusted out, and now I kind of have a clean slate. The biggest thing is that it's a low, or it's a normal size van. It's not a high top. It was very important for me. It is. I should, it's not very. It is. It is very important for me that I can stand up in the van. I plan to live out of the van, so I want to be able to stand up in the van. I spent a lot of time, because this is something I've been working on, like thinking about for over a year and a half working on for since January and I've come across a lot of different ways to do an extension first you can buy a fiberglass top I could buy a fiberglass top from like California but they're like thousands of dollars I don't know why it's literally fiberglass I don't I don't understand why it's so expensive but it is it's seriously so so expensive so out of my price range so that that's off the table what's what's next let's see uh, you can do a, a wooden extension. People use wood and build their own high top. I don't have a lot of good woodworking skills. <laughs> I haven't worked with wood since, like, my woodshop class in high school. And, uh, yeah, I don't even remember the teacher's name, let alone how to do anything. So that's kind of at least somewhat off the table. If I really needed to, that's probably the option I'd go for. You can also do... 
for a while, I was looking at, like, what if I got the top... I found a broken down high top from, like, a scrapyard. I cut off the high top, and then I welded it onto mine. And I was like, that would be... That would be cool. The biggest problem is that I couldn't find a broken down high top anywhere. So that wasn't going to happen. Also, I didn't know how to weld, so that was a problem. I had a friend who would who could weld, and he was going to do it for me, but... That problem fell through. Maybe that'll happen still. I'm not sure. I could have done... Like a well, like I could have made a welded top. People make metal tops all the time, and that actually increases the value of the vehicle too. If I ever plan to sell it in the future, while the wooden tops and the fiberglass tops don't increase the value, a metal top does. Explain to me that. I don't understand. But I don't work with metal. Once again, that would be have to job that I would have to get my friend to work on with me all the time, and I'd be taking up all of his time. And I don't really want to do that, especially since I don't know anything about working with metal. It would just have to be him. <laughs> so this is the conclusion that I've reached of what I'm going to do to extend the roof. And it sounds super janky, but that's 100% because it is. <laughs> I plan to buy a bed topper. So for a truck bed, you know how they make those bed toppers? They're fiberglass. They have, a little, they have like two little windows and they set on top of your truck bed so you can like camp on the back of your truck. I plan to buy one of those, probably from a scrapyard, because I know I've actually seen those at scrapyards. I plan to get two of those and stick them on the roof. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good idea yet. The idea came to me from this YouTube video. I'll have it linked in the description. It'll be like, I think, I'll put it as one of the links and I'll clearly label it. It's this guy who did it, and his story I find super inspiring because he just worked on his van as often as he had the money to work on his van. He was, like, living out of it while he was converting it. And he's been living in it and converting it for, like, six years. And uh, that's what he did is he took uh, this bed topper and he put that on top. And then he used all the pieces of the metal from where he cut a hole in the roof to create the rest of the van. It, it's super cool. His van looks ghetto, but not super ghetto, right? He has it all painted and it looks actually really nice. You can tell it's homemade, but it doesn't look sketchy. Like, I would happily have my van look like his. And so, on top of that, he's also hilarious. Like, I don't know why. His sense of humor kills me. Just the way he, like, makes jokes, the way he does things. I, I lose my mind. I've watched that video multiple times. And I, every single time, I'm just laughing the whole time. And I'm also in shock of how awesome his vehicle is. The biggest step right now is figuring out... No, the biggest step right now is pulling the trigger and buying a height or uh and buying a hard top and cutting a hole in the van. It's scary. I don't want to do it, but I I really want to. Like it's what I want. I just don't like the idea of cutting a hole in the van. Wonder why. <laughs> I guess that's gonna, that's going to be my that's my next project. That's what I'm going to be working on um behind the scenes. The reason that TikTok being inconsistent is dangerous to me is that I need to be making consistent money to live out of the van, right? Living out of the van will actually be cheaper than living where I live right now. But on top, the thing is that I won't have a steady job, right? I want to be in the van traveling. I want to be making money online. Uh, I was originally going to look into like trading stocks and stuff like that. I was learning how to options trade for a while. I was also looking into drop shipping, you know, all the classic the classic things of I have a course, buy my course, I'll teach you how to do this, that kind of stuff, right? All the make money online scams. And not to call them scams, some of them work, right? But that's what I was working towards being able to do online. Like that's what my goal was. And then I've my whole life I've been like, oh I'm a content creator. I like making videos, even though I really didn't make a lot of videos, I only really made personal projects. And then I'm friends with a very amazing human being named Ryan Bean. I'll insert some clips of him. Ryan is an inhumane human. He is literally like the most insane person I've ever met. I've seen him throw himself off of cliffs, contort in ways that aren't human, and then eat shit like a god and stand back up. Like it doesn't make any sense how he does the things he does. And he just, he always blows me away with everything he does. Like, from the way he explains subjects, the way he understands the world, like, the way certain things work, and just his understanding of movement blows me away. 
He's a very amazing person. I'm super glad to have him in my life. You can tell I respect him highly. And uh, we were in the gym one day training. He, I was filming for him. And uh, he was just, he opened up his TikTok and showed me how much money was in his TikTok balance. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's like, uh, that's a lot. Not like rich, not at all like making, but enough to live comfortably like in a shitty little hotel or not hotel enough to like rent a little shitty place, like enough to be like living off of that. And I was like, whoa, what the heck? And he's like, we talked about it for a while. And, uh. I was like, I wonder, should I try and hop on that? Like, should I learn, should I start working on TikTok stuff? And he's like, I just remember him being like, you should at least try it. And that's when I was like, okay, for the month of January, I'm going to try and post two videos a day and try and find, see if it works. See if my content works. The big thing is that I was saying to myself, it wasn't about making money off TikTok. It was more, I want to show people that I can make entertaining content right that way I wanted to be I don't know I had this idea that maybe I could get picked up by a company as an editor and then I could show them that I can make good videos and people like my videos and so I started making TikToks and uh, I picked a few different subjects to to work with so um, I believe my originals were video parkour and art those are the three things I picked and I said I'm gonna try and make a video two videos a day out of one of these niches and try and find a group of people that enjoy the videos I make. And they they uh, they were all doing okay. Parkour is definitely doing the best, but it still wasn't doing super amazing. And then one day I was like, oh, I don't know what to do for my art today. I'll grab one of these graffiti markers because, oh, keep in mind at this time, I did not want to talk about graffiti on TikTok. I didn't want to talk about graffiti anywhere on the internet because why would anybody you're if you're a graffiti writer why would you ever tell people on the internet that you're a graffiti writer like that's just dangerous and so it's like okay I will just grab this marker I had and I'll, I'll show it off and talk about it and you know it's a graffiti marker but I don't really have to talk about that per se I don't have to talk about that I do graffiti I posted the video at like 10 at night which was super late for me at the time I thought that videos posted at 10 wouldn't do well and I went to bed and I woke up and I went from 10 followers to 100 followers and I lost my mind. <laughs> Looking back, it's hilarious, but I really was freaking out. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like that video is doing super well. And sure enough, that video did great. I think that was one of my first videos to break 10K views. And it was, I think it was, I'm actually 100% sure it was. And it was just crazy. I was like, whoa, that, that's insane. And so I thought for whatever reason that was just my channel doing well, not that that content was what people liked. So I was like, okay, I'm going to still do some other stuff. And I did some other videos and I didn't do as well. And then I was finally like, okay, I'm going to do another, I'm going to do another video on kind of graffiti markers. And sure enough, that video did great too. And it was after the second one did great that I was like, okay, if I want to be doing good on TikTok, I need to make graffiti TikToks because apparently that's what does well. At this time, there was really only two other big content creators that at least that I knew of making graffiti TikToks at this time, and that was Seco, FP, FT, oh my goodness, Seco, FTP. And then there was a guy named Yen. Yen was doing uh, videos about graffiti, talking about kind of graffiti tutorials, graffiti lessons. He was talking about, um, how he does it, how people do it, different writers, different styles of writing, stuff like that, talking about heaven spots, explaining a tag, that kind of stuff. Seko was doing more just showing showing off graffiti stuff, right? He would show himself filling up a marker, uh, that kind of stuff. I was like, okay, what, what do I enjoy doing in graffiti that I can show, right? Because I could do lessons, tutorials like Yen does, but then I'd be competing with him. I could just show off markers like sec does or seco does but then i'd be competing with him i said what can i do differently and i realized that like if i talk about kind of the markers themselves right if i talk about different valves different brands of inks different formulas that kind of stuff that that would be what set me apart on top of that i could talk about making stuff because diy graffiti was 
really what I was the most in love with. Um, now's probably a good time to talk about my history in graffiti. There's a reason you don't see me doing a lot of pieces, and that's because I never did a lot of pieces. Any of the pieces I did when I was really a prolific writer were straight letters. I really only did straight letters just because that was what I was comfortable with, and I didn't care to get better at anything else. <laughs> I really only liked seeing my name on stuff. I was a very prolific tagger. I just really cared about getting my name up. I wanted to be able to walk around every city street and see my name. Like That's kind of what I cared about. Not about making a good looking piece, just about seeing my name on stuff. And that's something that I have had to work on recently is growing as a graffiti writer from somebody who just catches tags to somebody who does pieces. So my favorite things in graffiti were getting up just tagging, and then making stuff. I really loved paint mixing. Crank Ghetto blew my mind when I first learned about it, and it's all I did. I seriously made so much. I was making and selling it to local friends all the time. I was making so much. I was always working. I had, I don't think a single day went by where I didn't have xylene burn, like lung burn from working with xylene just because I was mixing so much paint all the time. I was literally mixing so much paint that I couldn't use it all, which is why I even started selling it. I loved mixing up different colors, putting them in cheap mops, and then going and just emptying a whole mop, like a whole 12 ounce mop in the city. Like That was my favorite. I loved making graffiti supplies, and I loved caching tags. That's pretty much all I cared about. At this time, I didn't have a good way of uh, getting cans, right? Because a lot of this was during high school too. When I was most prolific writer was during high school, and during high school there was no there's no local graffiti shops. None of the art stores here carry any decent cans. If I wanted cans, I had to be Home Depot cans. And uh, during high school, I was underage, so I didn't buy cans very often. The only time I did was I had to go in and like the classic. Oh, I have a bike. I'm I'm spray painting my bike, and they'd be like, Oh, you can have like two or three cans, right? That kind of stuff. Um. Didn't have a good way of buying things online until pretty much the end of high school. And so for a lot of the time, I, I really just was buying... I don't know why they let like a kid buy Xylene, but I would seriously... I was like, how old are you in high school? What, like 16? I think 16 is when I... Because I that's when I got my car. Yeah, so I was around like 16, and I'd walk in and buy a, like a quart of Xylene, and they just wouldn't bat an eye. But if a kid went and bought spray paint, they'd lose their mind. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid so stupid but so mixing DIY and mixing was what I love that's really what I really enjoy and that's still what I love most about graffiti I've grown more and I really enjoy letter work I, lo I enjoy calligraphy a lot too now but mixing and DIY is kind of my bread and butter of graffiti that's what I love most so I decided one day I'm going to do a DIY mop because the, I know how to do this. I've done these all the time. I'm going to show people how to do it because it's something that once you kind of learn how to do it, you just, for me, every time I'm anywhere, I'll look at a bottle and be like, can I make a mop out of that? Can I make a mop out of that? Ooh, look at this bottle. Can I make a mop out of this? And so I was like, I want to show people that you can make a mop out of pretty much anything that has a lid and a screw, right? If it, if it screws on, and then there's a lid on top of the screw on, you can make a mop out of it. So I started, I the first video I did, I didn't explain it very well at all. I just made a mop and then it did okay. And then I did another video and I kept doing these videos on the DIY, dollar store DIY. It's because this is stuff that I was doing all the time, right? Specifically like high school, end of high school. I, it was when I, like end of high school is really when I started and when I graduated high school, it was really when I started buying supplies online. But before then, I really was buying, like, I would buy, like, packs of 50 empty, unbranded graffiti mops from China. Wait three months for them to get here. Fill them all up. Empty them out. If you know Crink Ghetto, it, it ruins your mops, which is why I didn't. I was like, I'm not going to buy nice mops to put this crappy stuff in because it'll ruin it. So I just buy cheap mops. So for a long time, I was just doing DIY stuff. I was making my own mops, making my own markers. The only thing I would buy was graffiti inks. Just because I made a lot of ink in my days, but I didn't, it wasn't as potent, especially when it comes to ink. Homemade inks are only powerful if you add in additives, and a lot of those additives are just a pain to get. 
like uh I'm trying to think potassium permanganate jardinine violet jardinine green or no it's malachite malachite some some green all of these you can find them at like the like chemical aisle of your pet store but they always are distilled they're like a a distill distillation distil, delusion distillation okay it's always like one percent jardinine violet to nine percent water or to 99 percent water right so the only way to get the violet the stainer is to boil off this massive thing and i've done it a few times and i have to say that when you add in stainers to your inks they do become super powerful they're better than pretty much anything you can buy on the market but they are an absolute pain to make right you have to kind of do it in batches so for the most part i would just buy graffiti inks just because it was easier also because emptying out like 30 pens into a bottle was no fun and after doing it like all the time for a year, I was like, I'm sick of this. I'm just buying my inks online. Uh, <laughs> so for a long time, I just had, I was making DIY stuff and I had inks. So of course, when I started making TikTok videos, I started, I, I made a lot of DIY and just filled them up with the inks I had. And it was, it worked great, right? It still is working pretty great. I mean, I'm at three, at times of recording, I'm at 340k followers on TikTok. More than I ever thought I would have, but still, surprisingly, not enough. It's so strange. I would have thought that would have been more than enough, but it really isn't, right? I want more friends. I want as many homies as possible. <laughs> On to a wildly different topic. Let's talk about music for a minute. Uh, recently, I've been working on a playlist. It's called The Trip List. You can guess what the playlist is for based off the name. But I've been, like, spending all my time going through all of the songs that I've saved over the past like years and just trying to make the perfect playlist with like perfect play order. So like, you know, like it starts off and like the songs always kind of match the same energy of the song before and after it. And then it'll like slowly change to a more like, like a happier mood. And then maybe it'll change to like a sad mood. And I've been going through and trying to make this like, uh, this perfect playlist. And right now I think it's close to like five hours long. But then I plan to uh, finish this playlist and then uh, sit down with uh, eye covers on, maybe use some fancy paper, maybe not, and just listen to the whole playlist in order and just like feel the expression of the music. Because that's something I've realized recently is just how powerful music is. I've spent a lot of my life not, not allowing myself to be sad and cry about all of like my past traumas in life. Because I'm not going to come out here and be like, yo, I'm I'm so beaten up and broken inside. But I think everybody is. I think everybody has their little problems, their, the things that affect them. And like I said, I've been going through and dissolving my ego and realizing that certain things have affected me that I haven't ever realized affected me. That I've, I've shut down and closed off. And uh, I'm really excited to make this playlist and just listen to it. And just feel the emotions and hope those emotions will bring back uh, things that I've closed off in my mind. And that uh, I hope it'll be a good experience. So if you want to find that, link to my SoundCloud will be in my, uh, it'll be in the description. I haven't, I'm working, I want to make better playlists. I love playlists so much, but I never, I never really make good playlists. So that's something I want to work on in my free time is making some playlists. But you, you know, I got a thousand things I want to be doing all at once. That's one of the... It's definitely one of the other things I'm working on is trying to get some better time management skills because I'm just um, I'm very much a creative person and I want to be creating all the time and I just spend so much time doing so many random little projects and I need to be focusing more on things that are important like making YouTube videos and working on my van but often I find myself just being like no nah, I'm going to paint this bowl instead especially since it's like a lot of things I'm working on right now don't even directly affect my future. And I want to be working on things that are more important to my future. I'm spending a lot of time living in the moment, but I need to be better about preparing for the future too. Because like that bowl, I'm not going to be able to take that with me in my van. Oh, that's a crazy discussion I want to, I want to talk about. Is that I am what I like to call a minimalist hoarder. I'm an absolute hoarder. I'm a hoarder by tendency. I, I just really like to have a lot of things... I feel like everything is useful and that I want to have it. 
but I'm also a minimalist. And I've gone through phases where I would have thrown out every like all of my belongings and I only had like ten shirts, three pairs of pants. Like I literally had nothing. And then I slowly built up things like but one thing that I always have is a lot of art supplies. So that's why I call myself a minimalist hoarder. Is because right now I have probably the most stuff I've ever had in my life. But it's, it's still not a lot. Most of it is art supplies. Like, seriously, I would say probably 80% of my belongings are art supplies. <laughs> and that's something that's going to be very interesting when I move into the van. It's going to be hard to get rid of a lot of stuff. Especially a lot of the paintings and a lot of the art I have. Because I can't bring that with me. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I haven't decided. Yeah, I don't even know what to do with this stuff. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm just looking around my room, looking at all the all of my art and all my belongings. And just knowing that eventually, very soon, I'll be having to get rid of a lot of these things. And it makes me sad, but it's not... It doesn't make me upset. I'm really ready for that kind of a change. I'm ready to, uh, to really grow. Stop limiting myself based on my situation and just grow as a human. It's such an exciting experience. <laughs> Very nervous, right? Always nervous for big changes like this. But this is one that I'm bringing on myself. So that feels a lot better. It's not like some random, like when you're a kid and your family moves, something you can't control. This is a move that I am, this is the first time, like a move that I have directly controlled. Like a large move that is, right? It's not just moving out of my, not moving away from home, but like, just leaving this area that I've been in for so long. It's crazy. I'm very excited though. Very excited for the future. So if uh, if you guys are in any cool spots. When I live in my van. I want to come visit all around the country. Especially the US. Definitely want to visit Canada at some point, And all over the rest of the world. But for the van right now. Probably a lot of just staying in the States. But if you guys are in cool areas. I'll put out locations of when I come and visit. And I want to meet a lot of you homies because, I don't know, I, want to, I don't want to be a disconnected creator. I don't want to be somebody who just, like, isn't, con isn't closely connected to my fans. Because fans is just a weird word to say. You guys are my homies. Like, that's why I call you my homies. You guys clearly like either me as a human, which I hope, or you like my content, which I'm fine with too. And I want to meet you guys and get to know my homies. And I want to chill with you guys and go right. I mean, well, not, I don't really want to do anything illegal. We can go do some quote-unquote legal graffiti. You feel, you feel? <laughs> but I'm very excited to go out and travel. It's like my number one thing I'm looking forward to in life for the past, for the, the, the upcoming year. By the end of the year, I want to be in the van. I just need to focus more time on it. Let's go through and answer some questions. Uh, every day before I record the podcast, I go on my Instagram at Kai's Media, and I put out a story post asking for questions. So let's see some, let's find some questions. Further detail asks, can you talk about ASL if you know any? I do not know any ASL. All I know is the symbol for love, because I use that one all the time. And that's about it. I don't know, I don't know any other sign language. <laughs> What got you into graph? I think I've talked about this before. Don't know if I did it on last podcast. I'll talk about it quickly here. Um, I grew up around a lot of writers. My older brother and all of his friends were writers when I was growing up, so I was always around them. Uh, it was just a very distinct part of growing up was being around writers and being too young to go out and write with them, but I always wanted to, so I would stay home and practice, that kind of stuff. Uh, I took a break for a long time and then got back into it around high school, like I said. And then it's kind of just been part of my life. It was on the back burner for a couple of years after high school. It wasn't a big focus. There was other things I was more focused on. And uh, But now it's back at the forefront of my mind. Like, graffiti is art, but not all art is graffiti, right? <laughs> I do a lot of art that's not graffiti, but I also do a lot of graffiti that is art. Mark M. Skates asks, when is your next YouTube video? Uh, the next YouTube video is going to be this Friday, this coming Friday after this is uploaded. And it'll be that Blank Slaps video on my life. That video is coming out. It's like my number one priority is to get that finished. Any other websites to order supplies? So, of course, I work with Blank Slaps, right? But I wouldn't tell you guys to buy from them if they were crappy. Like, 
the main reason I advise if you if you want to buy a lot of supplies, unless you're buying cans because they don't sell any cans there. They sell a lot of caps, so if you want caps, you can go there. But if you want to buy cans, Blank Slaps doesn't sell any cans, at least not yet. Uh, I do recommend buying from them because I really really love their stickers. Their eggshell stickers, seriously, are some of my favorites. I've been buying them for two plus years, <laughs> and. I'll be buying like I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of stickers. I might as well pick up some markers while I'm on the website. Um, they're serious. Their markers are about the same price as everywhere else. There might be somewhere you can get like a couple of cents off their markers, but I believe they sell at pretty even prices compared to everywhere else. They don't sell any inks or paints. If you want to buy inks or paints, you're gonna check. Uh, Art Primo doesn't have as many inks and paints as they used to. They they kind of fluctuate fluctuate their stock. Um, if I was going to buy inks or paints, I would probably go to bombingscience.com or I would check out Graph City. Uh, I believe they have a lot of inks there too. You have to check Graph City. I know their shipping is always a pain in the ass for me. <laughs> from what I've bought from them, their shipping's been a pain. Um, so that's where I would buy other supplies from. If you want to buy a lot of empty markers, I would say go do some research and order from a Chinese manufacturer because you can get a whole bunch for super duper treat super duper cheap miles asks how do you find a tag you really like the best way to find a tag you really enjoy is to find letters you enjoy writing right if you enjoy writing the tag that's kind of what's most important right you can pick a word that looks nice like we'll pick the word demon for example because it's a cool word and it's a it's something that pretty much every new writer can be like "Ooh, what if i wrote the name demon even though there's a thousand demons out there writing right now <laughs> it's a cool looking word it, it sounds cool, reads cool. The letters themselves you can make cool, but if you don't enjoy writing D's or you don't enjoy writing O's, then you're not going to enjoy the tag very much. My advice is to practice a lot of different letters and then really find letters you enjoy writing. Uh, my personal tag that I go up and get up with, no, the one that's not Kai's, right, is not even based off of being able to say it out loud. I have a way I pronounce it, but I don't even know if that's how you would pronounce those letters. It's more about the letters shape and how they play together. I really like the way they look together and not mention like number one, I just really enjoy writing it. Like it's just a really good word to write and I enjoy writing it. Um, my girlfriend asks, do you have an awesome girlfriend? Yes, I do. We've been dating for over a year and a half now. Uh, I'm really madly in love with her. I don't see anything ending anytime soon. And I see her lasting a lot longer in my future than I ever really would have expected. So uh, I love her to death. Let's see. Please do more YouTube videos. I will be working on them. Like I said, that's going to be my priority. I'm going to try and do one video a week. Like that's just my number one goal right now is one YouTube video a week. And uh, that's kind of what I'm going to be working towards Let's see, Jacob asks, how can we improve on throw-ups, tags, etc.? The number one way to improve is to practice. Get yourself a black book to practice on pieces, right? The idea of pieces, the fundamentals. Once you have the fundamentals of piecing figured out, then you're going to want to go get cans, find a legal wall in your area, or you can just go find a place that's super, like a super chill spot, and then just practice a lot of can control. Can control is something that I never really worked on. I don't really have good can control. Something I need to work on more, but I don't see it. I don't have a good area to work on it right now. I don't really want to spend money on cans. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm not a big can user. I don't like spray up as much. I'm a big marker, marker head. I really just love markers. <laughs> um, if you want to work on tags, the best way to practice tags, I advise get yourself a piece of cardboard. And then go to Home Depot and buy yourself a bucket of Oops Paint. There's something called uh, the Return Section. I like. I'm pretty sure they even call it Oops Paint, but it's just paint that people return. You can buy these like giant, giant jugs of paint for super duper cheap. And all you're gonna do is paint the piece of cardboard, practice all your tags on it, just practice writing whatever you want to write. And then all you gotta do, you're gonna catch a few tags on it, try and fill the whole board up, and then whenever you're done, you just paint over it again with the same paint. It's super easy and it's super effective. It's a great way to practice. Uh, that's what I've been doing. I have that piece of the tag wall. It's a piece of cardboard that's been on my wall for like 
three years maybe, yeah, three years now. And it's just absolutely, it's hard. It's seriously like hard from just so much paint. There's so much paint on it. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> and let's see, throw ups and tags. Yeah, that's about, that's the best way to practice. Or that's the best way to improve is to practice. Okay, I think that's the majority of the good questions. The other ones are kind of just repeats of that. I love you, homies. Thank you for leaving me your questions. I really appreciate that. Always interesting to hear what you guys want to hear about. Uh, I'll spend the last few minutes really talking about one thing I'm super excited about, and that is getting guests on the podcast. I'm sure you've realized already that the Kai's cast is pretty boring. I mean, it's only episode two, but it's pretty boring. It's uh, just one person talking to himself the whole time. And uh, I think it'll be much more entertaining when we get multiple people on the podcast. Uh, I don't know who I want to do yet. Right now I'm working on trying to figure out a good way to like record a podcast uh, over the internet. Just because uh, I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts that are recorded over the internet and I hate how they sound. Right? Because you'll hear like, one person sounds like this, recorded into a nice clean microphone and it sounds great. And then the other person they're talking to sounds like this like they like they have been like and they've been and they can't really and they're like cutting out so you can't hear what they're saying or when they're like talking and they're talking over themselves and and like I just don't like it it doesn't sound good right so I'm working on trying to figure out a good way to record uh that how to figure out how to record and not make it sound like that <laughs> so Definitely something I'm looking forward to. I have a few friends I would like to interview. I definitely want to do a podcast with like some of the cool people I know in this area. But I definitely want to interview a lot of people that I just don't even know. And get to know them through a podcast so that you guys get to know them too. I think I'll definitely do one with Ryan soon if Ryan's down for it. Just because that's very interesting. And I think that's a... There's a lot to unpack about Ryan. And there's a lot... I think he's just a super cool guy. And... I think everybody would find there's at least something about Ryan you'll find interesting, even if you don't like movement or parkour. Ryan's just a very cool guy, and I think he's very interesting. So he'll definitely be on a podcast. And then I have some other people like I want to get Salt on the podcast. I want to get uh, Lost Cat of Mystery on the podcast. Lots of cool people that I've been looking to work with, and I would love to get them on a podcast. So uh, leave me some ideas for people you'd like to hear on the podcast too. That would be super cool. And uh, as always, I read all the comments on YouTube just because there's not a lot of them yet. So if you guys ever really want to like, if you don't want to, if you want to like talk to me, you don't have to just hit me up on uh, Instagram. Although that is the best way if you want to get in contact with me, just PM me on Instagram. But uh, I read through all the comments. So if you ever like, hey, I have an idea of a video that I think would be cool. Or uh, here's there's this really cool guy I think you should interview and get him on your podcast. Leave me comments. I love reading your guys' comments. Your guys' support is awesome. I just can't even believe that anybody, anybody watches any of my videos. That blows my mind. Especially the YouTube videos. Because, I mean, TikTok and YouTube are just so, so different. If that doesn't, if that isn't apparent by the fact that my YouTube has a thousand followers... And my TikTok has 340,000. I think that should be enough to let you know there's a big difference, right? And uh, I'm just amazed that people even enjoy my YouTube. Like, that's one of the things that blows me away is when somebody leaves a comment or someone will message me and be like, when's the next YouTube video? Like, people are wanting to see my content. And that is a feeling I've never, never felt before in life. And it is so, so cool. Because I've been in that same seat. I've, like had a content creator that I loved watching their content and been like, when's the next video? Like, I want to see the next video. And it's just so crazy to feel like I am in that seat now. I am a content creator. Like, this is something I never expected to happen in my life. It was something that I, I wanted really badly, but realized that I was like, I don't, it won't happen. And I remember for a long time feeling like I just wasn't, I wasn't someone that people would care about watching. But now I've realized that like, literally anybody can be a content creator like it doesn't take a special kind of person you just have to be a person each person is individual and that's what we find so interesting when we watch people's content is that they are just a different human being it's the idea of seeing how others act and what they do and how different it is from you i think
think that's why we enjoy watching people's content. <laughs> or it's just really entertaining, right? If you just watch content because it's really entertaining, that happens too. I feel like that's the two reasons I watch content. I either watch it because... I guess it's, there's three reasons. I'll give them three. One, I like the person, right? Brian from Schmood, I love him as a human being. I think he's so funny and very creative. And I just enjoy watching videos even just to get kind of little glances into him as a human being. Second, I just enjoy good content, right? If it's, if it's fun to watch and it's entertaining, I'll watch it. And I enjoy watching it. And then three, if I want to learn something, like I'm trying to learn a new skill, I'm trying to learn how to edit a certain way, how to embroider, how to do, how to tie dye, stuff like that. I can, I enjoy watching videos that are well made on how to do that. So that's what I work towards. I want my YouTube videos to f follow all three of those. I want them to be entertaining, show off me as a human being so that other people can realize, hey, Kai's is a cool dude. And then, okay, that sounds kind of egotistical. I want people to to see me in my videos. I guess that's the best way to put it. I don't want it to be like a disembodied voice. I want it to be, I want you to know who I am. And then I want it to be informational. I want people to learn from my videos. I think that's what gives them a lot of value is making videos that aren't just entertaining but also are worthwhile. I'm sure you've noticed recently I've been working on some more black letter stuff. I've been following this really awesome course on how to develop a traditional black letter style. I've been working with uh, Pilot Parallel Pens. I've had them for a long time and I've always enjoyed writing with them. But learning this black letter has been so much fun. I've been getting better and better at it every day I work on it. I just love, I love it. I love the letter shapes and it is so enjoyable. And I'm just really excited to translate it more into my street scene and catch tags in this black letter style. Black letter right now for me is pretty slow. Right? I have to perf I have to kind of get better at calculating my distance, my lengths of my lines. But I know that as I practice, I'll get more comfortable with it. I'm really excited for in the future to go out and catch tags in this black letter style. I think it'll be really sick. And it's just a style that I've seen all over Instagram. And uh, I think it's just so sick. And I'm really excited to be doing that. And that's something that I'm sure you've you I talked about it earlier. I've talked about it this whole podcast, that growth is just kind of my focus for this month. And I really think that if this should be this, this should... I really think this should serve as your call to action. If you sat down and listened to this whole thing, first off, thank you so much. That blows me away. If you really have listened to this whole thing, I love you so much. Send me a message on Instagram, and I will personally thank you because it really means a lot. And secondly, get off your ass and go work on something. Go learn a new skill, right? Something you've been thinking about learning for a long time and just start it. The best hobbies are ones that are cheap to start. And the best thing is that a lot of hobbies, there's a cheaper entry point, right? Find something you're interested in. I'm sure you already have something. I'm sure it's already you're thinking about it right now. Start working on it. You have enough time. There's no excuse to not have enough time. Dude, most people spend like eight hours sleeping. You only need like six. You can live happy off six hours of sleep. Take that extra two hours. You probably sleep longer than that. <laughs> Who sleeps only eight hours? Oh my goodness. But take some of that time and go work on something. Working on something is so much more rewarding than anything else in life, right? Developing a skill is just one of the most rewarding feelings when you see growth. And uh, that's my call to action for this podcast is to go out and try and grow. Tell me about it in, tell me about it on Instagram too. Send me messages. I like to hear what you guys are working on. So like hit me up and be like, tell me whatever you're working on. Even if it's not art related, even if it's not graffiti related, I'd love to hear about what you're working on. Uh, I'd love to see you guys' progress too. Let me know. Show me your, send me flicks on Instagram. I just love you homies. And I'm really, I really want to see what kind of stuff you guys are working on. I want to see what kind of people you are. What kind of people watch my content. And uh, I think that's, I'm really excited. So please do it. Otherwise I'll be sad. <laughs> if uh, you enjoyed this podcast and you found some sort of value in it, whether entertainment, me as a human being, or there's something informational in here somewhere, uh, give it a share. Send it, with, send it to somebody else, somebody you think that would enjoy it. That's super appreciated. You guys are the reason I am on the path I am today. And uh, I love you guys so much. Also, um, I have a P.O. box. I'll put that in the description. Send me whatever you want. I will open it up. Socials, as always. Uh, TikTok at Kai's with underscores. 
in between each letter linked in linked below youtube you've already here hope you've subscribed turn on that bell notification or just remember every friday i don't even care if you turn on the bell notification as long as you're here every friday <laughs> i love you homies so much uh instagram kai's media you know it you know it working on some projects i will see you guys in the next episode of the kai's cast